it's one of those ones you keep saying it was week in, week out. Anybody can beat anybody else and they proved that didn't they against Pats. Absolutely, and I suppose Bray, I don't know how many years they've been in the Premier, but you know, they seem to have been in the Premier for the last seven, eight, nine years and they're one of those teams that, you know, they, they, they sell them challenge at the top, but they're always sort of mid table and they always get get enough results to keep them mid table and I suppose from that point of view, you know, they've always been a difficult place to go. And I suppose maybe the fact that the surroundings and you know, sometimes people think you're going to a venue that's going to be easy and it never is. And um, and I keep saying in this league we need to be at our highest performance, high intensity and uh, if we're at that I feel we will win the match. But as I keep saying, if four or five fellas aren't at that level, then it becomes a difficult day. But thankfully last week was very good and you know, I keep saying to the lads, they've raised the bar. That's the level they need to play at and um, you know, the atmosphere is good and you know, when you're back in contention and you're back up to second, you know, it shows you that um, they know what they have to do. A lot of talk at the moment about playing surfaces right throughout the league, but he has never one of the easiest ones. No, and you know, it, it, it defies logic, you know, that licensing is given out and you know, you're a third of the way to the season and you see certain grounds and certain pitches and they're in very bad condition and it's unacceptable and you know I, I keep saying that unless serious penalties are imposed on clubs um, because having a groundsman having the pitch cut watered properly you know is the basics of professional football and the basics of any ground um, we do it for a training session never mind our, our home games and uh, you know it's the basics of, of, of um, getting Brown's right, so that is disappointing, and I suppose you know there's no point in talking about it. People just have to put sanctions in there, and 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 not accept like you know the licensing, you know mystifies me because you know you're told you have to have this that and the other thing, and you know eyes are turned sideways, and other clubs are left left off, and I just think it's not acceptable. What's the squad update on that for training today? Um, squad update is good. Um, everyone is is available. Um, you know we have a few knocks after the other night. Michael McSweeney got road Morrissey. Um, it's still an ongoing knock, but I expect that um everyone will be okay. And um, I suppose the good thing, you know, while the League Cup game the result didn't go for us. I think the good thing was a lot of the lads got one hundred twenty minutes, and they were fairly wrecked on Tuesday when they came in for training. And really, it's it, the good thing it does. At least they got the game under their belt. I had a very tough week coming up. It's important that we have everyone on the edge, and um, you know, so it's like everything else. You know, when you win three games in a week, your confidence is up, and the atmosphere is good, and the comp competition for place is good. And even the lads who played the other night are all hoping to get a start because a lot of them did well. And you know, so from that point of view, it's um, it's all positive. So uh, could many of them, could many of them get a chance now in the league after their their cup? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, to be fair, I think if you look at it over over um, since the start of the season. You know, you look at, you know, Dooley's played a lot of games, starting off a lot of games, so has Ian Turner. Mark has come on in most games, Danny has come on in most games. Gavin started the season, was it played the first number of matches and got injured. Um, Michael has come in and played quite a few games. Um, Healers has played a few. And I suppose Alan Smith probably was the only one because, you know, he, he just played the League Cup games only. And obviously Conor McCarthy won't be involved now for the weekend. But uh, Johnny and Kevin would. So from that point of view, um, Kenny Brown is still suspended. But um, yeah, uh, you know, I suppose at the end of the day, a lot of fellas put themselves back in contention, and um, you know, and, and, and that's the that's the way we needed, and that's the way we wanted, and uh, that's why the game was so important to us Monday night. Mm. Last week, um, and the nine points are probably the most pleasing part, performance-wise. Yeah. Out of that week, what's pleased you most? Well, I think Finn Harps and particularly Shamrock Rovers you know was a really good performance and I thought against Pats we were very good for for about an hour but we tired and we didn't kill them off but I suppose overall you know against against two title challengers we came out with two clean sheets so defensively despite the fact that Kenny missed one of the matches and we had we had a few changes across the back to keep two clean sheets was very important to us but I think overall you know we we looked Good going forward, we created a lot of chances, and I thought we played very well. You know, in, in both games, you know, the Rovers game, we we dominated totally. The 
pads and how we dominate totally for the first hour, maybe 70 minutes, but we did tire. But I think if we if we'd stuck the second goal, it would have been an, an easier game for us. But at the same time, they had no shot and goal. So from that point of view, we look strong, we look solid, and we look like we're going to score goals. And um, I suppose that's probably the difference this year And it, it, from that point of view that I think there's goals in the team and, and um, that's what's pleasing. But at the same time, we haven't lost the basics of keeping clean sheets either. And psychologically, I'd say out of last week, it's great, even though there was the very defeat, but you know, in the, the league going forward, that's a great psychological boost. Ah, yeah. You, you look at it, it it's, as I, I, I said, look, you want to win every game, but you have to be realistic. And at the end of the day, you know, we're challenging for a league. We want to challenge for the FAI Cup. We're in Europe. Uh, with m massive matches and a lot of matches to play mm -hmm. and you see what sometimes people don't understand is that is that when you have so many games and you discuss it with your physios and stuff and there are certain guys are on treatment and they're saying look at, you know if you play them tonight it's danger you might pull hamstrings and whatever and the difference you see as well if you look at it there's a three week break coming up you know which doesn't do the clubs any favours you know maybe one two weeks you, you might get away with three weeks is a long time and then all of a sudden you've, you've games rushed mm -hmm. You know, so you end up playing, you know, five games in fifteen days. We end up playing three games in six days, you know, and then you go and you have you have you have a month. We have one game in a month, you know, and that's that's you know the balance of the league isn't right. The balance of games isn't right, and then you go into Europe and you go and have to play in Europe, and then you have a couple of league games that are going to be postponed, thrown back later into the, into the month. So you're back into playing three games a week. So from that point of view, it's very difficult then. You know, to go every three days playing the same guys because then you, you your injuries mount up. I suppose from experience and from the professional voice of our physios, you have to balance things up and you have to look at fellas who are coming back from injuries, fellas age profile, and um, so far this season, you know, working with the the, the physios, you know, we we've, we've been very good because there've been very few fellas have been out injured. Um, any length of time or maybe a week here but compared to other years where we might have had three or four guys out for a long time touch wood this year we've been very good and we've been monitoring it. and I suppose that's why you have to balance up uh, game time and that's why the other night while you might have preferred not to have made as many changes you know at the end of the day we had seven fellas that couldn't play anyway from the, from the previous Friday night so you know and, and at the end of the day the fellas that did play on the pitch bar Conor McCartney and Alan Smith, who hasn't played in the first team uh, league game, all the other fellas have a lot of league games under their belt. So you know, it, it was is an appropriate game to give them the opportunity. And we were disappointed to lose because we had the opportunity to win the match. But you know, these things happen, and as I keep saying, that uh, there's much bigger games to come. As you mentioned, long-term injuries. How's John getting on? John Cavanagh. Yeah. Absolutely great, and big round of applause this morning to him because his first day back on the pitch with us. You know, so it's been psychologically a massive moment for him because, you know, he's been on his own for literally 12 months. And, you know, when you're in the gym on your own, it's very, very difficult. And even though he comes in here every morning, he says hello to the lads, they're walking out in the pitch training and he's down in the gym. And, you know, it's it's been a tough time for him. But this morning was his first morning on the pitch. Long way to go for him now. He only took part in about 20 minutes. But at least, you know, he took part in 20 minutes and hopefully over the next month certainly we'll come back after the break I'm hoping by then that he'll, he'll be back in contention by then you mentioned the clean sheets against two of the considered yeah. uh, contenders Pats and Rovers it, it was a great performance by the back five because Owen O'Connell was lo is lost to the club at yes. the moment and Kenny was out suspended so like Michael Maxfield has been done a brilliant job yeah and I suppose what, we're, what we've tried to do I suppose and you, and you can see this yourself, lads, and our supporters can see that from over, over the last couple of seasons, we've tried to get strength and depth. You know, our squad numbers this year are less than they were actually last year, but we've tried to have better quality players. So we've tried to have a scenario where, you know, that our bench and our seven or eight or nine subs that can come in are equally as good. And I think that's why against Derry the other night, while the fluency wasn't there, you know, the effort was there and you can see that they're still high profile players. And, and like that, when you had Michael come in the last day, Johnny moved in against against uh, against Rovers and the guys were tremendous you know so that's what you need and, and um, you know so you need that your bench are as good as the fellas that are starting because that's the, that's the strength you have you know because if you have two or three injuries and the fellas come on that aren't as good well then you, you can't compete so you need that you know so that's why we deliberately this year reduced the panel but tried to have we'd say one to, one to 20 of quality as opposed to having 24 last year and maybe not having the same strength and depth. Nine, nine points out of nine there, obviously, three wins, and that subconsciously, are you kind of targeting nine out of nine, out of nine in the next three matches as well? 
I don't want to lose any game, Noel. Okay, so you prepare every week, you know, when you're trying to challenge and go for competition, you prepare every week to win every match, okay? But I keep saying that the problem is, you know, if you look ahead and you start adding up points, you know, if we probably went back to six, seven, eight weeks going to that slide, when you look at those three games, people say nine and nine, and then they're saying, well, when you pat some overs, maybe if you've got two draws and whatever, you know, you, you can't do it that way. You have to deal with the current situation. And, and uh, as I said, like, you know, from the start of the previous week, did I, did I plan to get nine out of nine? I did. But you had to start at the basics and make sure you got your first three against Finn Harp because we had been on a run where our confidence was down and we hadn't won for, for, for four weeks. So certainly, you know, all we're looking for is that Bray is a massive match because it's a difficult venue and they're a good side, you know, and they cause problems and you have to be on your game. And look at the bottom line is we go there hoping and I suppose not hoping, we're going there expecting that we're going to win the three points. And that's what you have to that's what you focus on. And then you deal with that. You know, if you start looking too far ahead, all of a sudden you start dropping points and then, you know, it defeats getting the nine oh nine last week. Yeah. You know, so the most important thing for us is that it's gonna be a grueler of a game in Bray. You have to allow for everything come because it's always windy. You know, the conditions are always very blustery up there. Um, pitch is never great, you know. So you know, you have to allow that it's going to be a right battle and you have to be ready for it. And uh, while sometimes, you know, you go to Turner's Cross and it's easier to play more expansive football and it's, it, it, it's not affected as much by the elements. Up there, you know, it is. So it's a different type of game and you have to be ready for it. And, uh, you know, so from that point of view, you know, everyone knows it's going to be a real battle and a real scrap and you have to be ready for that. John, on, uh, on Friday night, uh, two of the top three We'll be playing uh, Dundalk against Galway, and I suppose I'll pay for you know, almost expect Dundalk to win that game. Well, yeah. thankfully, thankfully, Mick, the league isn't played in paper because if it was the season wouldn't even start, we'd be all done, the league would be over. St. So, so Pats are taking on Derry City. If Derry City were to win that game, that put them on 23 points, so that would put them into second place above Cork City. So obviously, when City are playing on Saturday against Bray, you'll know exactly what has to be done at that stage mm -hmm. if you were to maintain second position again you you need to get the win against Bray yeah I suppose if I'm being honest with Mick and, and maybe it's because I'm getting old okay but from my experience I don't really care about any other match and you know my experience of being involved in different clubs at different levels is you concentrate in your own game you look after your own game don't worry about anyone else and you know, from that experience that I have, that has stood me well, because when you start looking at other games and wor 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 worrying about different teams, which I would have done ten or fifteen years ago, you get out, you get out, get away from that. And you just concentrate on yourself. And when you do that, and you're totally focused. It keeps your mind right. And most important thing is our game Saturday night. The other games don't matter. There's loads of time to go in the league. Loads of opportunity. The most important thing for us is to look after ourselves, keep our own form and deal with our own points. And if we do that then, and maintain that focus, you'll be fine. It's when you start drifting, that's when your problems happen. So, um, I know I constantly say that, but I've often come out with the groans, and I've often gone into the press conferences after the matches, and I've been asking the lads the results, because I haven't even asked about the other teams, because it's not important. What's important is that, have we done the business ourselves? If we have, that's three points we've, we, we've got. You know, whatever happens in the other games is what happens, nothing to do with me, and no, I've no control on it. Does that mean you wouldn't even watch the match now before you make recreation? Well, it, 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 right, to answer your question, I do from the point of view that, obviously, I go and I watch games, you know. So, um, like, even this Friday night, I plan to go and watch a match anyway. Okay, okay yeah. a live game, I plan to go to watch a game Friday night because if I, if I, if, if I have a night where sort of we play on a Friday night and there's a match on a Saturday night, I will go to watch a live match anyway because I like to see teams in action. I just like to get a feel of myself so I do that an awful lot anyway um, sometimes on TV I find it's hard you know to, to see certain things you but, but you don't see it all but at the same time you know when I sit down and watch matches on TV I do I do at times but I suppose I much prefer going to the games live and, and like this Friday night now I plan to go to a game not that one but I plan to go to a game to a Friday night that's just the way I do things and um, and uh, but I, I suppose from that point of view um I do find at times, certainly getting into later in the season, I do find at times, I don't generally sit down and watch games then because you nearly know every team you're playing, you know the way they play. 
and uh, you know sometimes you're you're better off just staying away. You know. It's not a harder watch the League of Ireland recreationally now, like. <laughs> In what way? As in to just enjoy it as a, as a football match rather than watching it thinking I might have to play this team later in the season. What exactly are they doing? Ah, well, as a manager, you know, I suppose. You're never, <laughs> suppose. You, 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 you're never, you're never too recreation from that point of view. But, uh, you know, I suppose what it is good is that, you know, I remember, you know, this, this, this year, um, a Rovers game was called off. And I went to watch Paxton and Dock. So you're sitting back in a match where, you know, you're looking at two you know, title contenders and you're able to sit back and say, right, you know, are you hoping for one or either to win? You're not. You're just sitting back saying, I just wonder how the game is going to go. You know, but um, but still, you know, your mind is, is in overdrive when you're working about, well, how they did this and how they did that and what you're going to do when you meet them and stuff like that. And that's just, that's just, you know, human nature. That's part of being a manager. Yeah. No, but he's on treatment over. With, with Celtic and, he, and he's on treatment and um, you know obviously when back in this he was on treatment for two to three weeks and um, as I said we really don't have any say because he's their player so um, you're going to make any overtures well we, 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 we're, we're speaking but you know he's their player and really um, it's not a position and not a strong position unfortunately on this one you know so um, if I'm a betting man, I wouldn't be putting money on it. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm a, I'm I'm always optimistic, and you're always trying to be persuasive, and you know, so you you, you never know. But it's it's uh, it's not for this week anyway. You know, so. Bray on Saturday night. Yeah, massive game. I think the next six days or three uh, massive games, but the most important game is always your next game. I think um, we're not going to take Bray lightly. I just seen like. Last week, the bet, the bet Pats at home, so it's always hard going to the Carlisle grounds, and we're really looking forward to it. Um, as I said, we'll, our next game is our most important game of a of a tough week. And are you happy enough with your own form? Yeah, um, I started the the season very well. Like, obviously scoring a couple of goals, uh, did myself wonders, confidence wise. Um, went uh, three draws and personally didn't perform to the maximum what I should. Should be performing, but um, I picked myself up, scored against Van Harps, and I thought the last couple of games have been personally doing very well. So as a, and that and the team have been doing uh, very well at all. So like for you had a great run of form, but in the match against Wexford, Jesus, you couldn't buy a goal. Oh, if I played another <laughs> two ninety minutes there, I still wouldn't have scored. It was just one of those games where the bottle just wouldn't have went in. But um, as you see, we we created a lot of chances in that game. Like we were just very unlucky. As I said, like if I played a couple more ninety minutes, we wouldn't have scored. And nine points in the last three league games, morale must be high now, is it? Yeah, the team are they're feeling very confident. Like um, even in train, we're, we're going into games believing that we can win any game, no matter who who we're playing against. And um, the obviously the next game that was the most important one. Like you enjoyed the rest against Terry, did you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it, um, it was it was it was good for the boys that haven't been playing lately. And as I was speaking to the boys, like. Um, the boys have started against Derry and Derry started their, their full eleven. Like they've been playing all season, so we really put it up to them. Like making nine changes is going to make a massive difference in any team. Like, yeah. All right, thanks. Shani, the Europa League thing is coming up in June. That's going to be a whole new experience for you, isn't it? You haven't played in it before. Um, I, with Sligo now, Sligo, yeah. when we played in Europa League oh, yeah, yeah. against uh, Rosenberg, but I only, only came on and it was, it was a very good experience playing. Um, yeah. Playing a couple of games. Yeah, no, it'd be brilliant for the for the for the league and for especially for Cork as well because the boys were speaking to the boys like last year the, the crowd and the atmosphere here against that Iceland team was yeah. unbelievable. So I'm really looking forward to it, like. Right. Well, how would you assess the season so far? Like we're, we're four points behind Dundalk, I mean, but yeah. you know you had a run of draws and we had a run of wins. Yeah, um, well, like the, a lot of new players coming into the team. I think it's going to make a massive difference. I think it wasn't ideal getting three draws, three draws, especially two, two at home, wrong, yeah, yeah. and which games we feel <coughs> we should be winning, and especially against and Galway, we would have fancied ourselves. But um, we started the season very well. Obviously, we, the boys got the monkey off the chest. Obviously, beating Dundalk, and um, I think the next couple of weeks are massive now before the break with these three games, and then obviously Longford the cup game, and then Dundalk break before the break. Or to keep trying to keep the momentum going up. Yeah, I think so. Like I think, 
Um, the next the next game is always important, but you have to look into next week like against Bowers away and Derry at home. So it's very important for us to. I think. We need to we need to be winning all three games maximally because I don't I don't feel the Dundalk are going to drop points, especially like the away form has been very good this season, and um, but I think this this season's been it's a very competitive league like I think with Saint Pat's Rovers the, it's going to be three or four teams up there to come yes. the end of the season. Yeah. This year you're just turned twenty two I think yeah. Yeah. You're still kind of have an ambition to go back to cross channel. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think <coughs> still young like twenty two. Well, like, yeah. it feels like I've been. Been around forever, but I'm um, yeah, But my my ambition obviously is to get back across the water again. But firstly now I'm just concentrating on Cork and yeah, yeah. hoping to win, win the league. Like we haven't we come so close the past couple of seasons, so I think that's my main priority. Noel yeah. mentioned the break. Do you think it's a it's a help or a hindrance? Because particularly with European football, are we due to play in all the thirties of June? Yeah, yeah. And the league doesn't return until it's twenty four. It seems a mad thing, like to. Yeah, it's, I think it's three weeks is the it's the longest yeah, break. The third to twenty four. Yeah, it depends. Like if we're on momentum and we're winning games, like I think it's going to kill us a bit. But um, yeah, and then the Europe game and <coughs> we felt like I think for winning at the moment at, at that time, like I think it's going to kill us a bit. But um, yeah, we've, and particularly we've, with the Dundalk game on the third of June, like before the break. Yeah, I know it's it's. It seems mad, like. It is. And especially playing the Dundalk, it's a massive game right before the break. Like I think, like if um, beat, you mean? I know if we beat him, like it doesn't matter. Like if we're four points behind him still, but we'll be only a point behind him then. But it's a very important game. Like, yeah. Sean, you were born in Luton, you were. Yeah, born in Luton. Yeah. Did you spend much time there as young? I was or? just a couple of months old. Like I have a lot of family. Oh, well, you came home. Yeah. yeah like, so that's good. Did you get an interest in football when you were from being born there? No, no. I was. Did you go back home? Yeah, I came over like six months. Yeah, I've been living yeah. here all my life, like I've only yeah. just born a lot of family over there, but I always go over and back. Did you go back to Waterford or Kilkenny? Uh, straight back to Kilkenny, yeah. Kilkenny all, like, okay. yeah. Yeah, out in Castle Comer, Clock. I've been living there all my life. Right. So, um, yeah, that's basically. So, the interest is up, would it develop in Kilkenny really? Would it yeah, my local, school, school, local like, team, uh, Dean Celtic, playing there since I was four years of age, till about 13, 14, and then joined the local team in Kilkenny. Or, City team in Kilkenny so City, Evergreen, Evergreen yeah. yeah, was there for a couple of years playing junior football when I was like 15, 16, so a bit of interest from Watford and then took a store from there. Yeah,